hi and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new um this is the rising sign videos for the month of may and we're up to the rising sign of gemini um i'll just do a brief overview uh, well um not overview was the word for it outline of of um what's happening if you haven't seen these videos before um with with the um retrogrades and with the, well with mercury retrograde and um the eclipses of the full moon and the new moon um i've actually last month for the april overview i explained um what you can um expect possibly expect and how you might be able to work with the energies of them so i don't want to go into it again because you can it's it's the around about the first 10 minutes of each rising sign i've sort of given a bit of an outline of um things to that could help to um for you to work with the energies of like i said the both the eclipses and um the mercury retrograde but um i think also i don't want to spend a lot of time um in the actual reading talking about it only because it takes a long time um we've got pluto about to be retrograde within the next week um and so we're already feeling his pre-shadow i was thinking um i've mentioned it in the other two so far as well that i think i'm um, edging towards the idea that i might um, do something on the community tab um, because I haven't used that yet and um, I think that that might make it easier for sort of you guys to jump to getting the information that way like referencing what you need to look look up I suppose um, through the community tab that way and then get the actual reading for the month ahead here if that makes sense um yeah so because we're also going to have venus um retrograde soon um but not just yet so but we may be feeling her pre-shadow already even though it's probably a, i think it's still another couple of months before she goes retrograde but yeah so i want to sort of outline all that all that information and i'm going to see if I can do a video on the community tab but if not I'll, I'll be at least writing a post anyway explaining um, what what you can expect with each retrograding planet that's happening now um, or about to happen and you know how different ways you can actually work with it like I did last month um, briefly kind of thing with the first 10 minutes around about of each um, rising sign video from last month being april 2023 as i'm um as i'm speaking now at this point so with all that being said i think we'll jump straight into your reading and see what we what um energies you'll be working with according to your rising sign and your chart your birth chart so let's have a look we've got vesta well straight away she's home and half um can see an energy because cancer and fourth house is home and family um psyche i always sort of look at it in um the literal sense as well of um balancing your own emotional mental health as well um or it might be someone else's um but it also points to other people's opinions not to let yourself weigh, be weighed down by that and don't take it on as gospel that's not your story it's theirs um taurus now taurus is what third no where's taurus for you 12th yeah 12th of course Twelfth house is um, fears and self sabotage in the negative, and Taurus is about money and self worth. 
Mars. Everyone seems to be, almost everyone, seems to be getting Mars. Mars isn't retrograde, thank goodness. <laughs> we had Mars retrograde not long ago. That wasn't fun. Um, okay, so you didn't get a lot of these cards, strangely enough. But, yeah, so I think you've got your home and hearth, balancing your emotions, self-worth, maybe finances, taking action in those areas, maybe. So what else have we got? We've got Aquarius. This energy is freedom-loving, rebellious, idealistic and technological. Right. Again, with the don't worry about what other people's opinions are. You you know, you've got enough going on that you don't need to waste your time on that. Sorry, I haven't really set these out so great. <laughs> anyway, uh, first house, well, that's your rising sign, what people see and the impression you give. Yeah, it's the, it's the first port of calls. The, the Aries sign. Um... Obviously, you're not Aries rising, Gemini rising. Um, but what I mean is Mars rules Aries. And that's Aries themes are always in first house, which is why we have the rising sign coming from the first house, because it's sort of Aries is like the, the baby of the, the me, 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 you know, sort of take notice of me sort of thing. Aries is first out of the gate. And that's where you get your rising sign coming through first, before first and foremost before anything. Um, yeah. Okay. So. So there's a bit about rising sign, a bit about community, money, self worth, and here again, right next to it, again, psyche can be about self worth, and not allowing other people's opinions to be your story. Semi-sextile, allowing. This is a good energy. This is an aspect. Sextiles and trines are the aspects you want to have in your chart. They're the, they're the easygoing ones. So that's, that's good that you've got that coming through. Twelfth house. Well, we had Taurus twelfth house. Twelfth house is Pisces, Neptune themes. Surrender. Which makes sense because we're going to be getting the full moon... Um, when are we getting the full? Oh, wow. I think we're getting the full moon right near within days, if that, of um, Pluto actually becoming in retrograde. Because right now, Pluto is stationed retrograde, ready to go retrograde. Um, but I think right near the full moon is when it's going to be jumping into retrograde, which is, uh, yeah. Gemini, well, that's you guys, the butterfly. So, rising sign, first house, Gemini. Sun, being, that this could mean um, your sun sign, where your sun is, um, or it could be the, where the sun is um, at the moment, or where, what sun sign you are in your, in your chart. There might be an aspect, but so far we've got an easygoing aspect, so that's a good thing. Trine. Wow, you've got both easygoing aspects. Flow. Yeah. Easy go, easy flow. Now, if I remember rightly, I think trines are the ones where you can... Like, it's super easy. And the sex dolls are still easy, but um, the thing is that one of them... You can kind of, it, it doesn't, uh, how do I put it? It doesn't challenge you. It doesn't sort of, it's not challenging. And sometimes a challenge is what we need. And right now we've got a lot of challenges with a lot going on in the skies for any sign. Um, fifth house, passion, that's Leo themes. Not in Leo for you. What is fifth house for you? Da, 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 da. I think that is Libra. Venus ruled Taurus. Venus ruled Libra. Okay, let's keep going. What have we got so far? We've got a bit, 
it to do with community. There might be some fears. Surrender the fears. Let go of them. Because what's happening? Full moon first. Which is around about, yeah, in a, within the week. I think the full moon is, yeah. From when I'm doing this. Okay, so these cards, this deck, um, some of them might be in reverse, but I'll walk you through them. Well, this isn't in reverse, which is great. Cancer, home and family. Where did we get? Vesta, I think, was where I was getting the home and half. Home and family, fourth house themes, but it's not in fourth. Cancer's not in fourth house for you. That'd be your, oh yeah, that'd be your second house, money and self-worth, which I was, I mean, that's 12th house. But Taurus themes is ruled by the Cancer sign for you. Immerse. And this is upright, so that's a good thing. Ooh, seventh house and relationship. That's all sorts of relationships. It's in reverse. Again, we've got like Mercury retrograde, for instance. You know, um, that's when an old friend or or romance might come back that really wasn't good for you. And it's sort of to show you how far you've come. And a lot of people can sort of think, oh, the boyfriend's come back or the girlfriend's come back. And then they get in the relationship again and it goes sour and they wonder why. Well, because the relationships with Mercury retrograde, it's showing you how far you've come and what you don't need in your life anymore. That might be what this is about. Or... The relationship with yourself that you haven't been um, perhaps putting yourself first and you might need to do that with all this 12th house energy money self-worth coming through see how it's connecting that might be a thing now I've been saying in um, I don't think I've said it in this video yet but with Pluto retrograde, the main focus is going to be introspection. There's going to be a lot of introspection because of so many retrogrades again. Um, but with with Pluto, it's about excavating and digging out what no longer works, what what's holding you back, what's sabotaging you, that sort of thing. And the best way that we can, one of the best ways at least that I think we can do that is with shadow work if you're open to shadow work i highly recommend it i myself i'm not just preaching it i'm going to do it myself because uh, i'm i'm amping it up now with um pluto being retrograde and all because we're feeling pluto's pre-shadow already and like i said it's only like not even a week until he actually does station retrograde he will actually be in retrograde. But right now he's stationing, sorry. Right now he's stationing, so he's not not there yet, but he's getting ready. Um, yeah. But yeah, Pluto is the ruling planet of Scorpio, and Scorpio is a very deep, um, powerful sign, eighth house themes, very powerful, very deep, very uh, transformative, very... Um, confronting maybe as well at times and with Taurus Taurus is the opposite see the opposite of Scorpio in the signs and with your 12th house that would be the 6th house I think would be um, Scorpio and 6th house will have um, Virgo themes It hasn't come through here, I don't think. You've got 5th house and 7th and 12th and obviously 1st. Um, the year, um, yeah, so where I was going with that was with shadow work that I, um, I have 
um, not that long ago, I came across an amazing channel um, called Tara Yogi, and he does some fantastic shadow work re readings. He does a whole bunch of different other readings as well, um, but I'm recommending him in general. But um, go go check out his channel if you're open to it, and and um, because he doesn't just do shadow work readings, but I really highly recommend the shadow work readings he's done um, on his channel there. So I'll put a link in the description box if, if anyone's interested to go check that out um, because it's well worth it and I think it's going to help. Like I said, I'm going, I'm going to be um, jumping in as often as I can and doing as much as I can to clear things away You know, because there's a lot of energies... Um, that we're working with but see here how you've got your trine and your semi sextile and that's pretty great allowing the flow you know that's good energies so even with all these all these difficult energies um i think again i i i I've said this with the other with the other um readings so far as well um and before anyway that even though there are difficult energies, knowing about them is so much better than not knowing, you know, because at least that way you know what you're working with and how to work with them. And hopefully I'll give you a bit more information um, once I get something posted in, in the, um, what's it called? The um, tab, community tab. Okay, what have we got? Conjunction. And it's upright, alliance. Mm. Alliance gives me 11th house. Well, there, that's also about relationships, see. And that's upright. So you can have your alliance, your community, in whichever way that is for you. Maybe it's not, maybe it is family, maybe it's not. Maybe... Maybe it's a business relationship um, or a relationship with yourself, an alliance with spirit. Your spirit's going to back you, obviously, they always do. But knowing you have that backing. And look, we do have Aquarius. There we go. I thought so. Alliance, community. Seems more of, you know, the community um, thing rather than... Well, Vesta's home and half, like I said, the, the can see and things. So maybe it is. Maybe it's about... Um, I've often said um, family or those who feel or seem like family, you know, to you in your, you know, perception, I guess you call it. Yeah. Um, but I think this is good energy. It's really, yeah, I think you, oh, here we go, Scorpio, investigate. Again, I don't think this is a bad thing, even though it's in reverse. And what's the ruling planet of Scorpio? Pluto. And who's going retrograde in less than a week? Pluto. So it's investigate insofar as investigate what you can dig out and leave behind, you know. Or, and or, um, investigate shadow work readings, whether or not you decide to look into... Um, Tara Yogi's, which I highly recommend, but um, there's plenty of um, shadow work readings you can find on YouTube, at least anyway. Um, I don't really go anywhere else, so I can't really guarantee any other places I haven't been to. Um, yeah, so let's see what the numerology has to say for you guys. Hopefully I'm making some sense here. Ooh. Parenting, 63. Okay, so we've got 
six is temporary opportunity, three is communication and action and activity. Parenting, well, we did have Cancer and Vesta. We've got easy flow, so there might be something to do with... Um, with the home whether that's parenting yourself as well you know how sometimes some people say we have to parent ourselves so to speak sometimes and six and three comes to nine with big beginnings big endings i i always say and why is it big because we've got both the eclipses um, we've had the new moon eclipse last month and now we're heading into the full moon eclipse and we're already feeling the energies of the full moon eclipse. So even though it hasn't technically happened yet, we've, we're feeling the effects now. But you've got a lot of easy flow energies. So um, I think even with Pluto retrograde, it's not going to really be a problem for you guys. That seems to be coming through right now because you've got so much easy flowing energy and the sun is creativity. So whether that's actual your actual sun sign in your chart or the transiting sun that's you know going on now, um, the sun is the ruler of Leo, fifth house themes. Um, Leo's not in your fifth house though, it's in your third. Oh, gosh, gosh. Yeah, because third... Didn't we get, um, well, we've got your rising sign, which is third house themes anyway, because third house is Gemini themes, even though it's your first house for you. The third house is in Leo and fifth is in Libra. That's right, Libra, because we're talking about relationships. Okay, so we've got a few come through right now. So what have we got? Compassion. I always say even up to 99 is master numbers. So big beginnings, big endings, twice still comes to a nine. Compassion. I think compassion for yourself, for starters. Um... Maybe giving and receiving compassion from others, to and from others, so you can be in alliance. Okay, health. Yeah, well, we got we had psyche come through. Like I said, emotional health. Seven, mind and creativity makes sense with psyche, as I said. One, um, personal power and vitality. Um, and that comes to an eight, which is stability. And I think it's to do with money as well, eight. And didn't we have, yeah, money and self-worth with Taurus in the 12th? Um, oh, leadership. There you go, yeah. Because you've got the easy energy, so this shouldn't be a difficult thing for you. Um, at all i think it's going to be easy flow for you actually even with all these retrogrades and and eclipses going on um leadership eight one we've got nine again stability money um personal power abundance yay 88 comes to a seven mind and creativity and double double um what did I just say? Money and um, stability. So there you go. Abundance. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So don't be worried about like, I mean, don't don't spend like crazy, but don't be overly concerned about money um, because things are flowing for you. Music. Wow. Three, communication, action, activity. Two is relationships. Three and two comes to a five, and five is freedom. 
dance to the tune in your heart and be free, feel freedom. Look, you know, they're flying around feeling free, enjoying the ride, you know. So should you, if you're not. Because that's like, um, not a Ferris wheel, what's it called? You know, the um, attractions at the um, theme parks and so forth. Okay, so what does the universe want you to know about abundance for May? Gemini rises. Do they need to know? Okay. What do they need to know? Okay, we're still going through it. Okay. Spirit, what do you want them to know? Yes, you do. <laughs> okay, I think that's it, that one that flew. Let's have a look. Okay. Oh. Which way do they go that way? Okay. Okay, so this one says... Oh, I've been meaning to tell you for the longest time that, well, concerning the illusions, time and space, the stars at night, the earth under your feet, the oceans, the rivers, the prairies, and everything under the sun, they're all yours. Guess I thought you'd have noticed by now. Oh, yes, they are, the universe. Yeah, because you're probably saying, no, they're not. Yes, they are. So this says, because this is the one that flew just then, the only economy that matters and can actually put money in your purse, your wallet or the cracks of your sofa is the economy created by your thoughts, words and actions. Exactly. Yeah. Um, every day someone new near you becomes a millionaire. Next, the universe. Exactly. So... In other words, why can't you be next? Why not? Dream big. Because once we've excavated and cleared away any negativity, um, um, in this full moon eclipse and done our shadow work, it'll be ongoing because... Um, Pluto's going to be retrograde for most of the rest of the year at least. Um, so, yeah, so the shadow work, because he's retrograde, you know, try to keep in mind that shadow work if, if, you're, if you're open to it, which hopefully you are because it's going to be a real help, believe me. And I'm not, as I said before, I'm not preaching something to everyone and not doing it myself I'm going to be doing it believe me oh yes okay okay so what do the guardian angels want you guys to know okay let me look at that one first and then see what else comes through these there we go okay this one says prayer dear god help me always to remember that this present life is but a fleeting moment within eternity help me always to remember that this life is but a dream help me always to remember that you exist within everyone and everything help me always to remember that love is all there is and all else is an illusion thank you yeah, and um, perhaps how you've been 
maybe how you've been viewing things is an illusion because look, they're all yours. Nothing needs to be held back from you. Um, you don't need to feel like you're missing out or that you're stopped in some way because once you do the shadow work, it's going to free you a bit and at least and um, you won't be carrying that ball and chain with you once the new moon comes. You can work on that, you know, w work on your um, hopes, wishes, dreams, what brings you joy, you know. Prayer. Dear Guardian Angel, help me to believe that all is possible through love. Help me manifest my dreams, yeah, and live an inspiring and fulfilling life. Help me to feel God's presence in every moment. Help me, to f help me feel eternally loved. Thank you for being always by my side. I think we've got a little bit of a, because um, I was thinking, gee, another prayer, and yeah, I can see that there's a bit of a um, theme here going. Is there any other messages before we close that? I think that might be it. Oh, that almost came. No, nope, there's another one. Healing. Listen to your heart. Love is the greatest healer. It has the capacity to balance and heal your emotions, thoughts and perceptions, which in turn will heal you physically. Your angels are here with you and will help dissolve your fears. Trust in the power of love to guide you and your life will magically transform. This card is confirmation that healing is occurring right now. And look, bang, right on abundance. Abundance is your right. You have abundance coming to you. And you are deserving of it. Listen to the music of your soul, the music of your heart. And allow yourself to flow and feel joy. I think that that's really what's going on for you this month. I think that we've... Um, We've got the um, message now, I hope. Hopefully it's made sense to you. Um, yeah, and I do wish you all the best of luck with it. And like I said, I I will work on, uh, once I've done all these Rising Sun videos, I will work on um, the information for the retrogrades with the um, community tab on my channel. Um, and I'll put the link in for Tara Yogi. Um, for his channel so you can um, check out his videos and his um, shadow work videos uh, was there anything else I needed to mention um, I think I already did mention it but you can get a bit of a snapshot idea about how what to expect and how to work with the retrogrades well with mercury retrograde and the eclipses from last month's video because I say, say it in the first around about the first 10 minutes. don't know if I said that earlier in this reading or not. But yeah, in the first 10 minutes, I've explained a little bit about that. So there's a bit of a snapshot idea of what you can, how you can work with the, those energies. So at least that's something. If you haven't seen these videos before, then jump into April's astrological o overview um, with one of the rising signs there. For the first 10 minutes, it'll um, I'll explain a bit. I'll be, it, it explains a bit there. I've explained it um, in the first part of each of the Rising Sign videos from April. Um, so at least you've got something to work with that way. And yeah, I'll, I'll, as soon as I can, I'll work on what I can put up in the community tab to help you guys out as well. Because there's a lot going on right now. And when we have... The information we know what we're working with and how to work with it it makes it so much easier to allow things to flow and bring in the abundance which um, with 
The full moon eclipse is going to be happening around about, what, I, I don't know, the 7th, I think, or something like that, maybe the 9th. And the new moon, regular new moon after that, will be somewhere between the 20th to 25th, I think. I didn't actually make a note of when they're happening. But it gives you a bit of an idea. So do your shadow work if you're open to it. Uh, clear away anything negative or any upsets or whatever so that it then moves you forward to be able to um, really, really make um, use of the new moon energy and bring in the abundance and dance. Dance to the music of your soul is what I want to say. <laughs> and take the lead in your own life. Be the leader in this beautiful energy. Okay, so with that, I wish you all the best of luck and I think you're going to have a wonderful month. Um, yeah, and I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll leave the links and so forth and, and um, work on the other bits once I've done all the rest of these readings. Um, yeah, and until next time, bye for now.